Greetings, friends. Well, what a time this is. Now, if you have been paying any attention at all, and I figure that most people seeing this video have, uh, that the media has said that we have a new president elect. Joe Biden is projected to be the winner by the media. But there is still some question about that. In fact, <laughs> something smells a little fishy about some of the stuff going on. Now, you may have seen some of the things that have been reported. You may have heard about dead people voting. In fact, you could put in dead, you can put in a person's name like I saw someone do from Michigan. The man had died in 1984 and his, uh, his name was in there to have received a, a ballot and voted and recorded on, in October. Uh, okay, and this was in Michigan, and the man's dead according to the Social Security Index, and the man voted according to the Michigan uh, official Michigan webpage where his name was put in. So there have been other people like uh, Candace Owens. I mentioned, I think, wrongly Candace Brown last time, but Candace Owens is the conservative black woman who has talked a lot about uh, things that need to be understood and things that need to be understood for the sake of unity. Uh, and that's really the theme I'm getting to here today. But um, uh, just the, the problems that have occurred in these different areas are really alarming. And computer problems where ballots are just being switched and uh, then all these other anomalies that don't make any sense, like all the other states being called on election night, but somehow the swing states are left out there and somehow they can't tally their, their, their votes. They can't tabulate at the same night when everybody else can and even states that have more, uh, more votes to count. I mean, something's up there. Something's wrong just in thinking of that. And, and places where, uh, for instance, Donald Trump did so well uh, in in uh, his uh, places that, that are really liberal bastions around the country. And then suddenly in some of these swing state big cities, he didn't perform as well. Something's wrong there. OK, so so uh, just just be aware. And of course, what always happens when there is a projected winner you have the projected winner coming out and saying, let's all heal the divide. Let's all unify. We want to be unified, joined together as Americans. Now, that's an ideal. That's what we should be in some sense. But to have unity without truth is not unity. It is just a facade of unity. It, it is based on falsehood. And what we want to know from this election, at least about half of the country or maybe more, uh, 70 million uh, voted one way and maybe 73 or four voted the other, maybe close to 71 to 73 or four. Who knows? The vote is some in question in some of these places. But, uh, you know, you have this divide of people who voted a certain way. And when there is suspicion of fraud, uh, which the media and big tech are trying to say, oh, no, no, there's no fraud. Just accept it. Just concede, you know, just 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 realize that we need to be one and work together as Americans. Well, you cannot have unity not based on truth. And that's what I want to get to a little bit today in this video, because I want to share uh, the problems with trying to have unity when it's based on things that aren't true. Now, I find it very curious that when I see uh, what happened over the summer when I see the Black Lives Matter people protesting to the point over the death of George Floyd, which was a tragedy, but but protesting over that to the point that they destroy property, that they that they hurt people, that they throw things at police, that they try to now have a, a campaign to defund the police. All right. When all that happens uh, and they, they loot and they steal and they do so in the name of justice somehow. When all they really want is revolution, but then suddenly they can just be all happy and joyful as they seemingly were when, when the projected Democrat was a winner. All right, that ought to concern you a little bit too, because unless these people win, uh, they're going to just cause revolution and havoc and justify the evil things they do. 
Now, there's a couple verses that the Bible says about this because there is a judge that is higher and there is law in this country. And friend, if you think it's over just because the media said it is, you're wrong because it is not over because there is litigation going on. Now, whether or not the judges and the litigation ends up overturning, we have yet to see. We do not know. But there is suspicion because there's a lot of fraud that's been going on and probably has been for some time. And there are, there's proof of, of this fraud in different, uh, different ways, like even the software company Dominion that is part of uh, uh, the 30 states being used and is tied to the Clinton Foundation. And they even said in January, testified in Congress, as Charlie Kirk mentioned, uh, how they testified in Congress in January that there is potential uh, v fraud uh, from foreign interference. And of course, we know countries like China might, or who knows who might have hacked that and, and why you could have a sudden flip of 100,000 votes and stuff that's happened. Okay, the, the, do, not, do not panic, but understand that a call for unity and peace does not mean there's going to be unity or peace just because people want it, just because it's an ideal. Because unity always has to be based on truth. Unity cannot be unity if it's based on a lie, if it's based on falsehood, if it's based on wickedness. It cannot be. And God sees to it too, because there's a couple verses in Proverbs that I looked up and saw. And Proverbs 11:21 says, though they join forces, or the King James says, though they join hand in hand, they will not go unpunished. But though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished, but the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. All right. Proverbs 16, 5 also says, Everyone proud of heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces or hand in hand, none will go unpunished. All right. So God will see to it. Now, whether or not they are exposed now is yet to be seen. That depends on how the litigation goes and maybe how corrupt uh, justice is uh, among whoever this, wherever this is litigated. Uh, and it'll end up in the Supreme Court most likely, uh, maybe sometime as it did in 2000, uh, maybe end up there um, as it did in December of 2000 over the Bush versus Gore election, where it was decided by 537 or so votes uh, that uh, Bush would be the president. Okay, so this has yet to be completely determined, even though the projection by all the media, nearly all of it, including conservative, some conservative media, and then some people who are even uh, moderate Republicans uh, have even uh, condolenced and conceded and said, okay, it's over. But it's not over. It's not over. This has not been certified officially, so it's not even certified until December 14th by the electors to be official. The states haven't certified it yet, and the electors haven't, and it's not official until that happens. That's when the president-elect becomes the president-elect. And even then, it may not be the case if the litigation is still going forward. So hang on to your hats. It's going to be an interesting four or five weeks, uh, and even maybe beyond, depending on how the litigation goes. All right, but I want to talk about this theme of unity, and it's going to be pushed more and more in the coming weeks. Oh, you've got to stop fighting this. Just accept it and be unified and join together. Joe Biden's the president. He's the one inaugurated. He's the one that we're going to follow. OK, well, maybe he would be somebody that would reach more across than some of the left wing people. Uh, but he certainly joined himself with some left wing people and some wicked people have been joined in with this party because they they haven't said a word about all this stuff going on and the corruption that's happened, even uh, that Joe Biden is tied to that a lot of stuff hadn't been hitting the mainstream media. But if you've paid attention to any anything going on, you know that there was problems going on and all these uh, shaking hands behind the scenes, backroom deals, secret meetings going on around the world in China and Kosovo. I mean, all these different countries, Kazakhstan and Russia and I mean, all kinds of places. There was stuff going on and money, big time money going in and, and even Biden getting some of that and maybe buying some of the houses he has. So I, I'm a little suspicious there on how uh, exactly right all that stuff is. And, and of course, it's pretty obvious by people like uh, Bob Alinsky, who uh, who had said uh, at the last uh 
the last debate time uh, that there was uh, that there was this um, problem that he knew uh, because he was one of the men involved in uh, what was going on with Biden and his son and all this money and the things and, and Biden even bragging on tape where he says he uh, uh, he cursed and said uh, that he was uh, saying this investigator uh, was uh, not going to get the 1.5 billion until he was fired because he went, he was investigating. Barisma. I mean, you, okay, there's a lot of detail there. I don't want to focus on all that detail because I want to get to what unity really is. You can call for unity all you want, but unity doesn't happen unless it is in truth. And truth really is found in the Word of God. Now, there's truth with the, with the uh, little t and there's truth with the capital T. And maybe you can refer to the Bible as the truth with the capital T and truth as in not falsehood uh, being with the little t. But we need to see truth in the culture. We need to see truth with what happened with the vote. Maybe count hand count every ballot when it's determined to be legal and legitimate and not somebody voting out of state and not somebody voting that's dead and not somebody voting that's illegal, underage, uh, not non-citizens, all the other people they want to vote. Uh, some have wanted to vote like felons, like people underage. Uh, there's a push for that. A lot of people have, are pushing for stuff like that because they just want votes to perpetuate their power. Okay, but let's get to John 17. Because many people will refer to Jesus Christ as one who wants unity. As if unity is the main thing. As if there's no need uh, for anything else but unity. We all just have to work together. We all have to be unified. Well, I'm all for working together. But I'm not for working together if we're going to base our work together on a lie. I am not for that. And Jesus even said as much because in John 17, 17, he said, Sanctify them, set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. God's word is truth. And it tells us about righteousness. And it tells us, like I said in the last video I produced, about uh, voted, did you vote the Bible? Well, the Bible tells us how we should vote according to righteousness, not according to these ideas of peace and unity and love, which isn't defined by righteousness. Okay, that is not love. And those things are false. And as I've said in a video like Delusion that I did a few videos ago, which got a lot of hits here, uh, it, 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 is, it is one that sometimes the devil will deceive people by. And there's a lot of deception that's gone on. But let's look at John 17 because it's often used in Christian circles and religious circles to push for unity. Okay, now this chapter is, is a prayer by Jesus. In fact, it's called the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus Christ. This is not the Lord's Prayer. Well, this actually is the Lord's Prayer. What's called the Lord's Prayer is really more of the disciples' prayer, the one that people have memorized. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or trespasses. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, the evil one. For thine is the, the power and the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That is really the disciples' prayer. And the Lord's prayer is really the prayer of Jesus Christ as he prayed as an example for us to even see his prayer to the Father in John 17. So John 17 goes into this and Jesus is saying in the prayer at the beginning of it, look like verse 3 of John 17. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So Jesus' prayer is saying that he wanted people to know God and to know who God is in the person of Jesus Christ himself as he was about to give himself in sacrifice on the cross. Now, friend, you might be having to face some persecution if you take a stand. They want you to shut up. They want you to be silent. They want you to not talk about their wickedness. They don't want you to talk about their looting and stealing. They want you to say it's okay because it's justified. They don't want you to, to talk about their wanting to defund the police and change things. Now, there might need to be some police reform here and there, but not to the level that they want to do because they don't like law. They don't like order. Organizations like BLM... Isn't, that's an organization that even says themselves that they're not about that. They're about revolution. That's not the kind of change that most Americans have wanted. But listen, God 
wants unity, but he doesn't want unity for the sake of unity. It is not unity unless it is joined in truth. Okay, and Jesus said as much, even as I, I quoted earlier from verse 17. But Jesus said in verse 11, as he is praying directly for his, uh, his disciples, who were the 12 apostles, uh, of course, one uh, d betrayed him. In verse 11, he says, now I am no longer in the world. He's about to leave the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are, united as one. Okay, so, so Jesus wanted unity for his disciples. And we see that after his resurrection, they were unified and they turned the world upside down. And thus Christianity was birthed and has spread to where it is today. Uh, a mixture of truth and error and different beliefs, but all supposedly uh, based on what the Bible says. But again, as I say, it needs to be a systematic understanding and not just picking a verse here and there because even the devil used, uh, used the scriptures and he did when he tempted Jesus. He just used them improperly and wrongly. We have to, we have to be rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, as 2 Timothy 2.15 says, we're supposed to make it our ambition uh, to, to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Make it our ambition to be approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing, interpreting the word of truth. So you can do that if you know God, you, if you have His Spirit in you, you can rightly understand this because He will help you. But God wants you to be unified in truth, and Jesus did too for His disciples. But He not only prays for His disciples, look at what He says after He says, you are unified in truth, you are set apart, sanctified, by the word of truth in verse 17, you go down to verse 20 and he says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. In other words, those who would be one and discipled after uh, Jesus uh, and his apostles had died, they would win others and then they would win others after that. So that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Okay? Uh, so again, he says in conclusion, uh, summarizing that part of his prayer, Jesus said in 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So part of how God uh, shows unity is through his true believers in Jesus Christ, uh, unifying not under some denomination, not under some particular uh, desire for unity, just for that sake, as if that's the highest ideal, but no, unifying by truth, being sanctified by the truth. And if it's not according to the principles and truth of this book, it is not real unity. So friend, I hope that this will help you to understand this often misinterpreted and applied passage in John 17 that has justified unity uh, for the sake of unity and not separated uh, the way the Bible says in righteousness, not according to truth. I've seen that with a lot of groups, even Christian religious groups that want to unify, but not doing it according to the Bible, doing it according to their own ideas and man's views and, and things that aren't true. Now, I'll, I'll deal with unity a little more maybe in another video when I talk about my top 10 lessons and get to what is the eighth lesson, unified diversity. I will deal with that a little bit more uh, in talking about what it means to have diversity yet unity. And there does need to be that in government. But this, this call for unity right now, just a little short time after the election, which is contested, is not unity. So friend, don't fall for it. Make sure, friend, that you are unified in truth. And I hope you like this video and I hope you'll share it with other people with the information I've given you, that you'll subscribe to my channel so you'll know what I'm doing next. Hit that notification bell and I will look forward to sharing with you again soon.